Hola, como estas? Bien. I hope so. Um, it is muy caliente outside, and I don't know if I'm using hot in the right context there, but anyway, you Spanish speakers can correct me. Anyway, I have this great recipe, and it is spaghetti squash lasagna casserole, and I can send you the recipe if you would like it. So um, anyway, I just got a pop-up saying we're about to have moderate rain in 20 minutes. I guess that's a good thing because it will cool things off. So um, I already cooked the spaghetti squash. And if you are not sure how to do that or you're feeling like I don't know if I want to do that, um, I will put a link to my YouTube page in the comments where I did do the spaghetti squash for you. But that would just take too long. Um, it really is not hard. Um, it does take some time. Um, and you probably can buy spaghetti squash already cooked in the store. I, I don't know. I've never looked for that. But it, so many other things are there now. So at the bigger supermarkets so that you could probably look for it. So right now I am heating up the pan so that I can put the spaghetti squash. Um, I'm going to say noodles for lack of better word. Um, into the pan and I'm supposed to saute them until they're kind of brown. Now, honestly, um, I've made this recipe a couple of times before and um, it even says that they should be browned some, but never really gotten there before. So I'm not really sure why we do this step, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then you can decide when you're making this, if you think it's necessary. I'm not sure that it is. But anyway, pan's already heated up and... I'm just going to spread it out. I did put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. So it has been greased some. I don't know if that's necessary. Um, but it might be. And then I need to add some salt and pepper and garlic powder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. A little bit of flavor. And I'm just going to brown this for a few minutes. And then while that is cooking, I've got it on, I've got it on about medium heat. And as y'all can see, I have a gas um, stove. And, um, but now I'm going to take eight ounces of ricotta cheese. And see, I meant to do this on Thursday, but I had an unfortunate incident with my ricotta. So it didn't work out. But anyway, so there's my ricotta. And... I'm going to take half, well, not half a cup, uh, four ounces of, um, which I guess technically is a half a cup of mozzarella and put that in here in the mixing bowl. And then just two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese that I grated up. I always grate my Parmesan and I try to buy, you know, something kind of decent, um, you know, that's up to you. All right. And I put that in the bowl. And then I think it is two tablespoons of egg beaters, but I've got to double check that. Um, yeah, two tablespoons of egg beaters. So I'm just going to use the egg beaters. And sorry if that's loud. Put that in here. All right, I think that is it, but I will double check just to make sure. So the directions say um, to mix the ricotta, Parmesan, egg beaters, and four ounces or one cup of mozzarella cheese. So I'm just going to mix those together. And um, so what happened Thursday is I had plenty of ricotta in the refrigerator and the, um, I had bought it recently and I opened it up. It was not good. So you know what I did? I subbed plain Greek yogurt instead and it was fine. It was great. Family still liked it. So stuff like that happens. All right. So now I'm going to mix up this mixture of the ricotta, mozzarella, and the Parmesan and the egg beaters. Wow, the ricotta is a lot firmer than the Greek yogurt. 
Just a saying. Just saying. Definitely need a spatula for this. Meanwhile, I am still cooking my spaghetti squash. Again, y'all, I've never really, I don't know if I've ever cooked it long enough to really see it get brown. It's like, I think in the times past that I cooked this, I kind of just gave up on it. I just said, okay, I guess it's done. All right, so now what I got to do is put a cup of these um, diced tomatoes in the bottom of this casserole dish. It calls for an eight by eight casserole dish, but to me, it didn't seem like an eight by eight might be big enough. So I used this regular two quart casserole dish. Um, so whatever you think. So I'm gonna put half of these tomatoes and when you're shopping for the tomatoes, make sure that you um, get some that are maximum Five carbs for half cup serving. Okay, that's one of the tricks. So look for Rao's R A O. Um, there's some others. You know, you just have to read the backs of labels and um, figure that out. All right. So there's my tomatoes. And then I think, like I said, I never really seem to get this brown in any part but that's I mean I guess it's okay it all it seems to turn out fine either way and again I don't even know if this step is necessary you may just decide I'm not going to do that so that's up to you of course so I think the next step is to put the spaghetti squash in here so um yeah add the squash top the squash with the ricotta cheese mixture okay so I'm adding the squash Just pack it in there. I hope you can see well enough. Alrighty. So now we have, we have a layer of the tomatoes. And now we have the layer of the spaghetti squash in here. All right. Now, I'm supposed to put the ricotta mixture in here. So we're layering it like regular lasagna. This is just healthier than the noodles that we typically use. You know, y'all, it's all about lifestyle change. It doesn't mean that you can't ever have regular lasagna again. It just means making some changes along the way, being open-minded to that. And I'm probably going to have to get a spatula to spread this out. It looks yummy, though. It looks better than the yogurt that I did. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So now this is the ricotta, some mozzarella, and uh, Parmesan, and a little bit of egg beaters, I guess, just to kind of hold it all together. Um, all right. So now I suspect we're going to put the meat. It calls for six ounces of Jenny O Italian seasoned ground turkey cooked or make your own seasoned meat. Now, I'm not a ground turkey eater. I know you, most of you guys know that. Um, we just got um, some meat from, um, we had a cow. We split a cow with some other people. Anyway, it's really, really lean. And I'm going to go ahead and use the whole pound instead of six ounces. But the recipe calls for six ounces cooked meat. So if you're really trying to do our program and really trying to cut the weight, you don't want to do this. But I live with a couple of carnivores and um, parceling up the meat just doesn't work in our house. So, um, however, when I was full on our program, I would have definitely done the six ounces and they just would have had to deal with it. So this will look like too much meat because it is. Okay, we're just gonna spread that out in here. Yes, 
definitely too much meat. And we're going to put the rest of the tomatoes, layer those back on top of the meat. And then we will top it with some more mozzarella cheese. I spread it out as best I can. Yeah, this recipe has a lot of uh, flexibility, I think, because you could make it spicier maybe and make it less Italian and make it more Mexican possibly. But I was just thinking that as I was putting it together, um, you know, it would be really cool. Um, if you did some different things with it. Pretty versatile. All right, so now we need to do another cup of mozzarella cheese on top. So I'm just going to pull it out here. I'm going to take myself back to my roots, making pizzas at Godfather's and Mr. Caddy's. I'm going to spread that out and then what I'll do a lot of times just for presentation standpoint and I did season this meat with Italian seasoning I do need to say that to um, to give it more flavor um, but I sprinkle it with some Italian seasoning nothing fancy just organic Italian seasoning and so that's it. Now I'm going to put it in the oven at 375 for 25 minutes. And I promise this time I will actually take a picture when it comes out and share it with you guys so that you can see the finished product. But um, I made it the other day and the guys loved it. And I've made it in the past. It's just been a while. And so anyway, let me know. It's really good. And y'all have a wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Stay cool and stay dry. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.